All right, guys, here we have another fairly simple problem. So here we have a rigid tank filled with water. We're told that we're initially at 20 bar, a quality of 80%, and a volume of 0 0.5 cubic meters. And then keyword, we are cooling down to a pressure of 4 bar. So we're asked to do a couple of things here. We're asked to sketch this process on a TV diagram, and we're also asked to evaluate the heat transfer, which is Q12 in kilojoules. So I'm gonna start by sketching out our uh, TV diagram. So I'll have a y-axis and an x-axis. The y-axis will have temperature in degrees Celsius, and the x-axis will have the specific volume in cubic meters per kilogram. Now I'm going to draw my vapor dome. I think something like this looks good. And now I'm going to draw the first process. So the first process, I'm going to create a couple of lines. And this whole entire blue line is going to have a constant pressure of P1 equals 20 bar as given by the problem statement. And keep in mind that the intersection between the vapor dome and the blue line on the left side here is going to be the x equals zero, which is the saturated liquid state. And then conversely on the other side will be the saturated vapor state x equals one. So we had an x equals 0 0.8, which should be somewhere around right over here. And this, if you drop it right down, should give you your V1 value, and if you draw a line horizontally, it will give you your T1 value. So now let's go ahead and find V1. So if we turn to our property table, we go to table A3, and we go to 20 bar right over here, and then we look at our VF, or our saturated liquid specific volume, and our saturated vapor specific volume. We can use the relationship of the specific volume at state one being equal to the saturated liquid specific volume plus the um, quality times the difference of saturated vapor and saturated liquid specific volume. So now I'm gonna go ahead and substitute our numbers. So we're going to have 1.1767 times 10 to the negative third. Just make sure you pay attention to that down over here, that any value in this column here for saturated liquid is to the negative third. And then we're going to add the quality times the difference of the saturated vapor specific volume minus the saturated liquid. And once again, you're going to make sure you make it to the negative 10. So now we just have to plug this into a calculator. And if you do, you'll have that your specific volume at state one equals 0 0.0799 meters cubed per kilogram. I'll go ahead and fill that on this table here. So we have V1 equals 0 0.0799. So the next thing I need to do is find this T1 temperature, which is pretty simple. We just go back to table A3. And if we go back to 20 bar, since we know we're at a saturated state um, between x equals 0 and x equals 1, then we can just use the saturation temperature here of 212.4. So I'm going to add that onto the uh, TV diagram here. So we have T1 equals 212.4, and that's degrees Celsius as shown up here. So now with the first process completely defined on this TV diagram, I need to define the second part of the process on this TV diagram. So I'm gonna once again draw my blue line on this side on the vapor dome, but you're probably wondering, well, where am I gonna to choose to put it? And I'm gonna put it underneath because we go from 20 bar down to 4 bar. So let me go ahead and add that right now. So there we have it. We have a blue line underneath and we have P2 equals 4 bar. Now, first things first, we're told that this was a rigid tank. So that's, that's a really important word there, rigid. Essentially, it tells us that the volume at state 1 is going to be equal to the volume at state 2 which in other words is 0 0.5 cubic meters. Now you might also remember that the volume is equal to the mass times the specific volume 
And as we know, the mass at one equals the mass at two. Matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So therefore, what that means is that the specific volume at one must also equal the specific volume at two because V1 equals V2 and M1 equals M2. So therefore, V2 is also at the same exact point and is equal to 0 0.0799 meters cubed per kilogram. So now we need to find the temperature at the second state. So we know we have four bar and we have 0 0.0799 cubic meters per kilogram. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn to our saturated table here. And if we go to four bar, so I'll circle four bar right over here, and we circle our saturated liquid and saturated vapor specific volumes, remember that we were at essentially 0 0.08, which is in between this number here to the negative third and this 0.46. So that means that we must be at the saturated temperature, which is 143.6. Let me circle that. 143.6 degrees Celsius. And let's notate that on this graph. So that's T2, which equals 143.6 degrees Celsius. So the next thing I'm going to do is draw my state two point on that blue line right over here. And I'm gonna connect process one to two via this line right here with an arrow pointing from one to two. So we have one on the top, two on the bottom. And as you can see, it's vertical because you have a vertical line because you have no change in volume. So now that our TV diagram is completely defined, let's move on to our heat transfer. So I'm going to apply the, first, apply the first law of thermodynamics, which just states that the change in internal energy equals the heat transfer minus the work. And now notice that we have a vertical line here, so we can't actually take an integral under a curve here because it's a vertical line rather than horizontal or diagonal. And we have no change in volume between V1 and V2. So very simply put, we have no work. Work equals zero whenever you have a constant volume process. So therefore, we're left with U12 or delta U12 equals Q12. Now we can break down the internal energy from its bulk form to its specific form on a per unit mass basis by saying that the mass times the change in specific internal energy, U2 minus U1, equals the heat transfer from one to two. So we don't have our mass and we also don't have either of our specific internal energies. So let's go ahead and find the mass first. So we're gonna use this equation right up here to find that. So at one or at state one, we have V1 equals the mass times the specific volume at one. So we have 0 0.5 meters equals the mass times V1 was 0 0.0799. And if you divide both sides by 0 0.0799, you'll solve out that the mass equals just about 6.25 kilograms. Now the next thing I'm going to do is find the specific internal energy at the start of the process. So I'll turn back to table A3. And remember the start of the process was 20 bar and we had a quality X of 0 0.8. So we're gonna use a very similar equation to this one except instead of specific volumes, we'll use specific internal energies. So we have our specific internal energy at state one equals the specific internal energy of the saturated liquid plus the quality times the difference of the saturated vapor minus saturated liquid specific internal energy. So to pull our values, we'll go to 20 bar and we have our 906.44 as our saturated liquid specific internal energy. And we have 2600.3 for the saturated vapor. And then once again, remember that your quality was 0.8. So I went ahead and plugged those numbers in, and when you do, and you plug it into your calculator, you'll have that the specific internal energy at state one equals 2261.528, and 
and that would be in kilojoules per kilogram. Now while we're at it, why don't we also find the internal energy at state 2. So once again, we'll use the same exact expression that we used above, except this time we're going to be, use, be using the properties at state 2 of 4 bar. So we're going to have our UF as 604.31 and our UG as 2553.6. Now the only thing we're missing in this instance is the quality, so we're going to have to calculate that. So basically to find the quality, we're going to need two things, two properties of the state. So at state two, what we have is the four bar for pressure, and we have 0 0.0799 for specific volume. So if we turn back to table A3, remember that at four bar, we do have our saturated liquid and saturated vapor specific volumes. And in addition, because V1 equals V2 in a rigid tank, we technically also have our specific volume at state two. So if we go back to this formula over here and we rearrange for the x at two over here, we already have all of our variables in order to find x. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have our specific volume at two equals the specific volumes um, saturated liquid plus the quality times the difference of saturated vapor minus saturated liquid specific volume, all at state two, so four bar of pressure. Now we're gonna go ahead and use this expression right over here. I just solved for X from this formula up here. And now we can go ahead and plug in what we have to find our X value. So remember, at V2, which equals V1, we have the same thing as up here, which is 0 0.0799 cubic meters per kilogram minus VF. So VF we have right over here as 108.36 to the negative third. So 1.0 36 times 10 to the negative third. Divide all that by VG, which is 0 0.4625 minus, once again, 1.0836 times 10 to the negative third. And when I plug this into my calculator, I found that the quality at state 2 equals 0 0.171, which would basically mean that the quality is 17.1%. So this is closer to a saturated liquid than it is to a saturated vapor. So now let's get back to finding our specific internal energy, since now we have everything that we need. So we'll have the specific internal energy, U2, equals UF, which was... 604.31 plus 0 0.171 is the quality times the difference of 2553.6 minus 604.31 and the answer for U2 should be U2 equals 937.6 0.64 and that's kilojoules per kilogram. So now we have our U1 and we have our U2. So now we can find our heat transfer, which equals our mass of 6.25 kilograms times U2, which was 937.64 minus U1, which was 2261.528. And now you have a kilojoule per kilogram times a kilogram, so the kilograms cancel out, you're left with kilojoules. And you'll have that Q12 equals negative 8274.3 kilojoules. Now it makes sense for this number to be negative because it says that heat, or sorry, the process one to two is cooling. So if you cool, that means heat is going to be leaving the system, so then Q must be negative. And last but not least, regarding this TV diagram I wrote here, uh, I just don't want you to get tripped up in the fact that the quality at 2 is about 17%, even though it looks like it's about maybe 75% here. This should not be drawn to scale, a more correct one should, be, should have the uh, dome here skewed a little bit more so that it'll show uh, as you can see here, I have a little bit more of a blue line to the right here than I do up here because 
process one or state one is closer to a saturated vapor than process two is. So, you know, I do show the correct concept here, but it's not drawn to scale.